YTPC, Padre Piper, coming to you via the virtual airwaves of YouTube, saying, Hello, YouTube Pipe community. I hope you're finding the blessings in your life. They're everywhere, folks. You just got to go out and look for them. And when you find them, give thanks for them. More will be coming your way. Wanted to take to the virtual airwaves of YouTube tonight to, uh, first of all, say... I think I want to say happy 4th of July to all my uh, American friends. I guess no matter where you live in the world, it's going to be 4th of July at some point. But uh, we have Independence Day here in the United States of America, and that's coming up. And I don't know if it's, the, you know, this weekend is the 4th of There goes Annie. This weekend is 4th of July weekend or next weekend because 4th of July is smack dab. Hey, pretty girl. Smack dab in the middle of the week on a Wednesday. Hey, there. Yeah. You give me kisses on camera. You're so sweet. It's smack dab in the middle of the week. Comes on a Wednesday. So I don't know if it's this weekend or next weekend. I, I, I don't know. Happy, happy Independence Wednesday. What a weird day for a national holiday. Smack dab in the middle of a week on a Wednesday. Anyway, I'm taking to the virtual airwaves tonight. Let me, let me, uh, I had a little charring light on here. Let me get another light going. And I'm gonna tell you what I'm smoking in a moment. And I kind of felt like that lighter was gonna run out. Mmm. All right, so I think we're good to go now with the, whoo, wow, that's some smoke, huh? Mmm. So what I'm bringing to you tonight I'm filming this in the evening time. Probably won't get up. It's a Friday evening. Won't get up till Saturday sometime. Is uh, the first in a series of top Padres top five lists that I'm doing this summer. And um, I'll tell you a little bit more about that. I do want to tell you first about this. A little bit of a ch channel, not change, but a little additional programming beginning this Sunday, July 1. Annie? If you're chasing lizards and you knock stuff over while I'm making a video, I don't know, what do you do with a German shutter like that, eh? Uh, where was I? Trying to tell you, July the 1st, this coming uh, Sunday, starting a new little programming effort on uh, my YouTube channel. I kind of know coming out the box, not every single one of my prescri uh, subscribers is going to... Uh, necessarily appreciate it. So I'm giving you the heads up now. It's not going to necessarily be purely pipe related, but throughout July, every Sunday evening, I'm going to upload a video that I think I'm going to call Words Worth While. I think that's the working title that I might use. And basically, it's going to just be some uh, motivational or, aspira or inspirational kinds of um, words, poetry, prose, something, uh, just to give you something of a little bit of an uplifting sort of a spirit. I'm going to do it each Sunday evening during the month of, uh, of July. Uh, it's around six o'clock or so uh, Central Daylight Standard Time. I should get those videos up each Sunday. And uh, again, uh, what I'm going to do is I always start my the titles of my videos off with Padre Piper on a rant or whatever it is. And so for these, I'm not going to do that. So if you see that pop up, it'll be a separate playlist. Too. If you see it pop up and it's it's not your thing because it's not 100% um, pipe related, uh, that's okay. You know, I mean, if you want to give it a thumbs down, just do so every Sunday evening at 6 o'clock. I don't care. Uh, I'm just giving you a forewarning. I think a lot of you are going to like it, though. I think uh, we're all in need of a little dose of uh, inspiration and motivation. So I'm just going to share with you some of the stuff that uh, I find in my uh, time of devotion, which is not always just um, my spirituality goes beyond just Holy Scripture. That is obviously my primary and key uh, form of spirituality. But um, I find other motivations as well, and sometimes I like sharing those with other people. So anyway, that's going to start this Sunday. Let's get back uh, to the, the purpose of this video. I have uh, decided I'm going to do a little series this summer on top five lists, and the first one we're going to do tonight is the top five uh, cherry blends, Padre's top five cherry blends of pipe tobacco and uh you know, it's just quintessential to uh, pipe smoking, cherry blends. I mean, it's just, uh, can you get more All-American than a cherry blend for the 4th of July, which is on a Wednesday this year? Did I, did I say that already? 
So I'm going to share with you my top five cherry blends, but for each of these top five lists that I'm doing, I want you to know that I have recruited a panel of expert pipe smokers from the YTPC, and I've asked them to take a brief survey. And uh, I thought I had 10 who had participated, but uh, somebody hit the submit button twice, and so it just looked like 10, and it was really nine. And I'm not going to say who that is, but his nickname is the mayor. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to give you a quick shout out to my uh, expert pipe smokers who, who, um, who agreed to be a part of this panelist and took part in the survey. And we're going to get a little bit of their data tonight as we talk about cherry blends. But uh, in alphabetical order, the nine experts are, and let me tell you how we defined experts. This is very scientific, the way I went about doing this survey. An expert is operationally defined for our research purposes as someone who watches YouTube and smokes a pipe. I mean, I, I just don't think you can get more accurate than that. So thank you to Briar Report, Burke Devlin 66, Derek Tant the Mayor, Eric Blue Collar Pipe Smoker, Ghost Cobb, Mark VV Matches 860, who by the way, 4th of July should be coming up with a boff. For those who don't know what barf is, a boff, that is the bacon old fashioned uh, smoke. Uh, matches 860, the Artful Codger, and the Vintage Piper were all participants offering their survey data. I promised I would not relate them to any particular answers that I would offer their data more as an aggregate. I tried to print it out today uh, here at home, and my printer wasn't working, so best thing I can do is uh, I've got it here on the phone, and it's in small print, so bear with me. So, we asked uh, our survey experts uh, three particular questions. We, I'm in multiple personality form again. Uh, the first question I asked was, when you think of cherry pipe tobacco, the first blend that comes to mind, whether you like that blend or not, the first blend that comes to mind is what? And here's the answers I got. Now, right out the box, I said I wasn't going to uh, associate any particular one of my expert pipe panelist members with a particular answer, but I don't think this guy's going to mind if I do that because he's posted a video about this. And so I'm going to refer you over to see his video. But his favorite uh, is something called leprechaun weed. And you say, well, I've never heard of leprechaun weed, Padre. And of course you haven't. It's because he made it up himself. It's his own mixture. And that is Eric, Blue Collar Pipe Smoker. I invite you to go over to his channel, uh, search for leprechaun weed, and he will tell you how to make that yummy uh, aromatic blend. Some of the other answers that came up. A uh, mixture of two parts Lane VBC, one part Sutliff Vanilla, this custard, one part Lane uh, Berry Cherry. Oh, that's his recipe for his version of Hobbit's Weed. So uh, Leprechaun Weed, similar to that. Other answers that came up, Boswell's Cherry Smash, Middleton Cherry, Middleton came up a second time, Sutliff Black Cherry, Paladin, Mill Middleton came up a third time, and this piper said that's the first blender they ever smoked. And then uh, a second time, uh, Paladin came up, and a close second being Middleton Cherry. I asked a second, I asked three questions. Let me give you those three questions before I get to my top five list. It's the... Second question I asked our expert panelist was top five cherry blends that I enjoy. And you, you can include less than five if that's all you got. And uh, the answers were quite interesting because um, one person said, I only smoke one cherry tobacco, leprechaun weed. I don't know who that could have been. Uh, it was uh, not a fan. That actually came up twice. Don't know who that could have been since they hit submit twice. Uh, Boswell's Cherry Smash, Lane Limited, very cherry. Blood Red Moon, McClellan Three Cherry. Oh man, I used to love that stuff. I still do. I've got it jarred, but it ain't there no more. Uh, Drew Estate Heirloom Cherry, Country Squire Flambeau. And I tell you what, that's a nice one too. Anything from the Country Squire Tobacconist is good. Middleton, Borkham Riff. I don't know who put that, but my goodness. That's one. That's on my no-go list. <laughs> uh, somebody said none. Uh, they're diabetic, so when it, they have to eat sugar and the whole sweet thing just doesn't go well with them. Um, somebody said, I honestly have to leave this blank as I've never met a cherry blend I could stand. Um, and then some other answers. Captain Black Cherry Middleton Paladin Hobbit's Weed Clone uh, Cult Blood Red Moon. Here's my top five, folks. Oh, actually, I had one more question I asked these folks. I said, 
what are some cherry blends that are no-goes for you? Now, a no-go is something you've had before, you'll never taste it again. You just didn't like it, you don't want to touch it. And uh, some folks, Annie, you can't lick the tripod, sweet pea. Uh, some of the answers we got for the no-go list included all of them, <laughs> Captain Black Cherry, uh, McClellan Cherry Cordial, Too Sweet, Yucky, CAO Cherry Bomb, Captain Black Cherry popped up again, there was none, there was a N slash A, Don't Smoke Cherries, uh, CAO Cherry Bomb, Mc McBaron Cherry Ambrosia, uh, Pipa, P-I-P-A, I've never heard of that, Cherry Cavendish, um, and um, gosh, somebody gave a, a whole... Oh, I'm into a different question here, so I'm going to hold off on that. This was the uh, top. They gave their top five. Uh, somebody said um, C&D Cherry Jubilee. That's one I haven't had. Hmm. Borkham Rift Cherry Liqueur. McBaron Cherry Ambrosia. Cult Blood Red Moon. Uh, Peter Stockaby's Cherry Blend. These are some of the ones that came up. Those are all good answers, and I'm very appreciative to my pipe expert panelists for participating. Here's what I came up with, folks, and I'm going to tell you. Uh, when I get to number one, what that is for me, because I'm smoking it tonight for this video, as I'm melting, because it was like 101 degrees today where I am, and although the sun is going down, it's still hot and humid. Number five, I actually had a tie. Two number fives on my list, uh, they were Cult Blood Red Moon and Lane Very Cherry. Why uh, number five? Well, there's some that didn't even make it on the list. Those two, I've just got to be in the mood for them because I find that they are so, so over the top with flavor. Um, the, the Cult Blood Red Moon in particular is one I've really got to be in the mood for. It reminds me a little bit too much of like uh, children's uh, cereal as a kid with cherry and cocoa kind of mixed in there. I don't know. Was it fruit? It wasn't Fruit Loops. I don't know. Cherry Cocoa Puffs. I, I don't know. But uh, if I'm in the mood for it, Blood Red Moon just hits the spot, as does Lane Berry Cherry. I just find the Lane Berry Cherry also, again, to be a little bit over the top sometimes. So getting into 4, 3, 2, and 1, number 4, Dan's Devil Ho Devil's Holiday. Now, I need to go back to the phone to get some notes on this, uh, this uh, Dan's Devil's Holiday. This is coming off of uh, uh, TobaccoReviews.com. Because it lists as uh, the contents, Black Cabinish in Virginia, that's all good, but the flavoring, check this out. Blackberry, black currant, cherry, fruit slash citrus, honey, raspberry, sweet slash sugar. I did not know sweet slash sugar qualified as a flavor, but apparently it does. There's definitely a cherry presence in this Dan Devil's Holiday. And if you really want a good, rich, sweet tasting, flavorful dessert uh, tobacco, aromatic tobacco, I think Dan's Holiday, Devil's Holiday would hit the spot for you. Number three on my list is Samuel Galwith's Celtic Talisman. Or you might say, Celtic Talisman. I don't care how you pronounce it, because I also probably just pronounce Gawith, Gawith, Gawith. I don't know, folks. It doesn't really matter. I'm not hooked on phonics. This is a really good uh, smoking tobacco, though. At its base, it's got uh, some Virginia and Burley in there. Definitely got a little bit of Black Cavendish mixed in as well. I always just kind of took it to be a lightly topped cherry blend and then when I started doing research on it I found out that actually cherry doesn't even show up in the description it's listed as the having the flavors of vanilla which is definitely there and Kirsch K-I-R-S-C-H now because I'm not you know a verse in words like Kirsch I had to look that up <laughs> turns out it means cherry Kirsch apparently is a uh, brandy type liqueur made from the double distillation of uh, a particular type of cherry called uh, Mariello. Mar 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 Mariello. I don't know. Again, hooked on phonics, folks. But uh, if you want a nice, good blend, the only thing I would warn you about, this is a great tasting tobacco from, from uh, Sam Samuel Gawith. Just be careful. It, it will burn a little hot if you take it too, too hard. Number two on my list was Boswell's Cherry Smash. Boswell's they just make good blends. They use great tobaccos. They have great flavorings. 
And if you want a good cherry aromatic, Boswell's Cherry Smash should hit the spot for you. And then number one on my list, it's what I'm smoking tonight. And I'm going to tell you what it is. It's in this house cleaning. It's in this basket pipe because really that's how cherry blends ought to be smoked, right? Something you picked up at the drugstore, maybe even with a drugstore lighter. And my number one cherry blend is from Lane Limited. It's called, I got a big old bag of it that just came in. Bum, bum, bum. There it is. It's called TK6. Lane TK6. Now, this is similar to Lane Very Cherry. The topping is almost identical, maybe just a little lighter, uh, a little lightly applied but tasty. Mm -mm -mm. And the other difference is there's different tobaccos in this. This is just, um, according to uh, TobaccoReviews.com, it's Burley and Cavendish, whereas the Lane uh, Berry Cherry has uh, Black Cavendish, Burley, and Virginia. There's no Virginia in this. I think it's a higher content of Burley that's really making the difference in how this flavor flavor profile uh, stands out. It's one of my favorites. My absolute favorite, as I've already mentioned, was the McClellan's Three Cherry, which isn't there anymore. But just to give you a couple honorable mentions, uh, Lane Dark Red, very good. More of a black cherry, kind of a quintessential aromatic. It's got some caramel and vanilla in there. Well worth the try. Um, if you can get a hold of the McClellan's Three Cherry, do so. That is just fantastic. And then uh, I'm going to tell you a couple of no-goes for me on the cherry spectrum. Captain Black Cherry. Now, I have heard some people say it's exactly the same as Delane Very Cherry. I don't think it is. It just tastes more artificial to me. Now, it's possible, again, with, you know, being Captain Black that they just use also a lower quality, but I don't know what it is. I think it's different. I didn't like it. The other one was the uh, Middleton Cherry. Um, it burned hot. And I only had it once. And I don't think I'll ever do it again because it was just too daggone hot. But folks, there are just a ton of cherry blends out there. I'd like to hear from you what your favorite cherry tobacco is. And for some of you, it might just be all of them are no-goes. A couple of my experts actually said that. So as we head into this holiday right smack dab in the middle of the week, happy 4th of July, happy Independence Day, happy birthday, America. July 1st, Sunday evening, we come out with our first edition of, I think I'm going to call it, what did I say I was going to call it? Uh, words Worthwhile. I think that's what I'm going to call it. So look for that on the channel and uh, look as we go further into the summer. We'll have some more of these top five lists. We'll hear from the uh, the Padre Piper pipe panel experts to see what their answers are. We're going to talk about favorite codger blends. We're going to talk about summer blends. There's a, a number of, of different top five lists that I'll be offering to you as we go through the summer. Oh, speaking of summer, man, it's hot out here. I think I'm going to have to go inside in the air conditioning to finish enjoying this big old basket pipe filled up with this Lane TK6. So until we meet again, Padre Piper, wishing you and yours God's peace, grace, and blessings.